Bushcraft 412. Today we're going to talk about the Schrade Extreme Survival Fighting Knives. Um, to get right into this, I got these knives for $16 a piece. They were on sale at SmokyMountainKnifeWorks.com. Uh, normally these are $25 to $30 knives, and I always passed on them because I felt they weren't worth $25. Bucks. Um, I looked at them and just felt, nope, not $25. Uh, 16 bucks. I was willing to take a gamble on these, and I think actually uh, 16 bucks. They hit the price point just about right on these bad boys. Uh, let's get into Schrade as a company first. Schrade, of course, uh, came around as a knife company here in New York, Walden, New York, in the Catskills, um, early 1900s, maybe late 1800s, uh, about a hundred something years ago, and they were a very big knife manufacturer. They closed their doors in 2004 and went out of business. And shortly thereafter, the brand was picked up. Um, well, not the brand, but the name was picked up. And they are now manufacturing knives in China and selling them with the Schrade name. Um, as you can see, here is... Let me adjust that light for you guys. Here is the box, the Schrade Extreme Survival. And who is making this knife? Let's see. Oh, Taylor Brands LLC. And if you're a regular on this channel, you'll know uh, exactly who Taylor Brands are. They are the company who makes m -Tech knives. They make m -Tech knives, Smith & Wesson knives. They make a lot of knives. They Well, they don't. They, they often advertise that these knives are designed in America and handmade in China. Um... They're basically an importer. They import Chinese knives, and of course they bought out the Schrade name and are selling Schrade knives. So, if you've watched my channel, you know my opinion on the Taylor brand stuff. I'll rehash it real quick. Basically, they make cheap, inexpensive knives, usually out of 440 steel, uh, sometimes 440C steel, which is a good steel uh, when it's properly heat treated. And the big concern I have with them is their uh, quality control seems to be iffy. Sometimes you get knives that have bad fit and finish. Sometimes knives with uh, blade grinds that aren't perfect. You know, you do tend to get the occasional dud out of them. Uh, but at their price point, which usually most of their knives are sub $20, I can live with imperfections because these aren't collectible knives. These are knives too. To use. Uh, with that said, let's talk about the sheaths before we get into the knives. This is probably one of the most over-engineered sheaths I've ever seen on a $16 knife. Um, I'm actually more impressed with the sheath than I am the knife. It has a pretty generous belt loop. Will definitely fit your two-inch belts, but it is adjustable with Velcro, so you can make it bigger or smaller. Uh, you just gotta, you know, put a new crease in it when you do that. You have a snap for retention. Let's get that light back. Sorry guys. You have a snap for retention. You have a sharpening stone pouch in the front, which is Velcro and strapped on, so it is removable. You can take that off at any time. And inside, there is a plastic insert for the knife to go into, so you do not cut your nylon or poke out to the bottom. Uh, very nice little feature. Keeps your knife from uh, snagging on the nylon and ripping the hell out of it. Um, as for attachment, of course, as I mentioned, you have the belt loop. You have the molly strap in the back, which is Velcro and a snap uh, for extra stability. And you have a leg tie at the bottom. So lots of nice uh, mounting options. It's a nice nylon sheath. The quality seems to be good. I don't see any loose stitching or any problems like that. Um, I'm actually very impressed with the sheath. And according to the paperwork they gave me, it says you can buy a new sheath for, I think it was $3 plus a couple bucks shipping. So I actually might buy a couple more of these to use with a couple of my uh, 6 inch uh, M Tech knives. Because I, I think these might fit a couple of them. I'm going to bring it down and, in the basement and try. And if they fit, I might order some more of these. It gives an address on a card with the knives you can uh, order new ones so very cool now let's get into these knives um 
This, of course, is the Schrade Extreme Survival line. A um, whole bunch of different knives in the line. Um, I know they do have a couple folding knives, and it goes all the way up to fixed blade knives such as this. Uh, there is one knife I do have my eye on, and it's the Extreme Survival knife that uh, has a hollow handle. And it's one piece construction, very similar to the Cold Steel Bushman. Um, looks really nice. Price point though is like 40 bucks. And I don't want to spend 40 bucks on it when the Bushman's like a $20 knife. And the Bushman's made of high carbon steel versus these Shrades are made of stainless. So, you know, price point, I don't want to buy it. But I do have my eye on it. And if I ever find it on sale, I'm going to pick it up. Uh, these ones are considered their fighting knives, not. Uh, well, they're, they're marketed as the uh, Extreme Survival Fighting Knives, not as Wilderness Survival. They are actually not too shabby for $16. Bucks. Um, this one here is a hair over 6 inches. This one here is closer to 7. Um, well, let's, talk, let's pull these up and look at these things a little closer. You have this one here is a bayonet style is how they sold it. Um, thickness on the blade, wow! <laughs> that thing is about a quarter inch thick. Really impressed with the thickness. And one of the things I don't like about this, as you can see you have a bevel here, but on the opposite side you don't have that same bevel. You can see the line. On this side the bevel is different. I don't know why they would do that, because originally I thought there was a false edge on the top, but there's not. And just kind of a goofy thing. I didn't like it. I really wish that the bevel was the same on both sides. But nonetheless, kind of a drop point style knife. Uh, almost a spear point if you look at it. Very thick. And here's the model number. SCHF7. In case you're interested in picking one of these up from uh, Smoky Mountain. The uh, Schrade logo is just on there with... Whatever it is they put it on, it's not stamped in. The handle is an over mold. Um, rubberized, I don't know, Zytel. I don't know, it's hard. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard, hard plastic with the finger grips built into it. The pommel is coated metal. Um, at least that's what it says on the website. I mean, you can definitely tell it's metal. I think it's literally just metal with the uh, same kind of coating that's on the blade. Whatever this powder coat is, I believe is the same thing on the pommel. Um, construction feels very tight, no wiggle to it. Pommel is very secure. Uh, probably glued because I don't see any pins. Um, but it's definitely something, you know, could you hammer with this? Probably, you know, a $16 knife. Don't know if this bad boy will handle it, but who knows, you know, it is an over -mold, uh, a molded handle. As you can see, there is a, a seam running down it, so it is two pieces that were probably epoxied together. So there is that one. This one is the same knife, same exact handle, same exact pommel. Only difference is your blade style. Same thickness. Love that thickness. That is really, you know, impressive. This one is more of a clip point, but it has the, uh, this one is different in that, as you can see, it has an actual false edge on the top. There is the bevel here and the bevel on the opposite side. So the knife is actually uh, symmetrical, unlike the other one. This one, the model number is SCHF8. Um, significantly heavier knife, even though it has an extra, only an extra inch to it. Quite a bit heavier feeling. Um, this one here has, you know, nice weight to it. Really nice kind of balance to it. This one here just feels so much heavier. So much heavier, so much more weight in the blade. And it's only about an inch longer, you know, which really is, as you can see, it's not a tremendous size difference between the two of them at all. But, uh... Let's talk a little bit about the use of these knives and where I think you're going to, what you're going to use these knives for. Number one, they're billed as fighting knives. 
they're not billed as wilderness survival. Um, I think they're on par with that. Um, I think these are, you know, they're not going to be your best fighting knife out there. I mean, there is a lot of great fighting knives out there. These are very heavy for fighting knives. I mean, these are, you know, about the, almost close in weight to, to what a, a K-Bar is, to be honest. Um, you know, their length is similar as well, but uh, the weight's about the same as a K-Bar. You know, but they're not, it's, the balance isn't as nice as a K-Bar. They just don't feel as good in the hand as a K-Bar. Um, but, you know, K-Bar is also a $50 knife versus this is $16. Um, so I think as a, as a $16 knife, this is something cool to have in the gun safe or in your dresser, you know, for when that person comes charging in your door. Um, because, you know, it's definitely thick enough to use as a stabbing weapon. This, you know, that is one thick blade and that will go through pretty much anything you jam this knife into. So, that said, I think this will be uh, terrific for kind of home defense, self-defense. Uh, a little big for kind of everyday carry, if you ask me. Um, it is a stainless steel, so of course it's going to be corrosion resistant. It's got the uh, powder coated blade, so probably, you know, you would have to really neglect this thing to rust it. Uh, likewise, with the stainless steel, of course, you're getting a softer steel. It's not going to keep an edge as well as carbon steel, and you're going to have to sharpen this thing more often. But I don't foresee this as something you're going to be doing a lot of cutting with. I wouldn't bring this out in the woods and be batoning wood, cutting and doing things like that. Not my choice. There are better knives you can get for 16 bucks if you're interested in wilderness survival. As for a self-defense weapon, you can get some nice neck knives and some smaller knives that will probably do more damage than these. Uh, but if you want a big, heavy K-bar size knife for 16 bucks, this is what you got. You know, I mean, I guess yeah, that's the best way to put it. It's a K-bar size knife for 16 bucks, made of stainless steel. I like the looks of them. You know, I mean, with a lot of these, I think they look nice. They have nice handles. The handles are very nice grip. Overall, decent buy for the money. Not, you know, I mean, anything you get less than $16 in this size, a 6-7 inch blade, is going to be an m -Tech or something else by Taylor Brands. So, you're not going to, you know, if you buy something else, you're not going to get something that much better. So, with that said, in this price range, you know, you're looking at picking between MTEX or this, something by Taylor Brands. Those are the only things I know of in that price range. But on the other hand, you get up in the 20s, you know, and this is what kills me about these knives and where I get the most negative comments is this is a $16 knife and it's okay for 16 bucks. But for like $22, you can get the Cold Steel GI Tonto. So there's a $5 difference between the knives and a massive difference in quality. You know, the GI Tonto is a nice carbon steel knife that's going to last you a lifetime. So is this the best investment? No. Is it something cool to put in your drawer and have around? Sure. If this was going to be my one and only knife, I would not buy this knife. I would save up my money and buy a Cold Steel GI Tonto or something along those lines. Maybe a Cold Steel Bushman, something like that. If this is going to be my one and only knife, but as part of a collection, no problem. These are a nice little cheap addition you can add to the collection. So I hope you enjoyed Bushcraft 412 with the Shrade Extreme Survival Fighting Knives.